if you guys haven't yet heard of Gary Watkins, uh, I don't know what cave you've been hiding in, in the past few years, uh, but Gary basically is um, an entrepreneur of art, and he has so many, many, many stories to tell. In fact, <coughs> in speaking with the prepper for tonight, uh, I Gary mentioned he wasn't sure which of the stories he could tell, so uh, I'm pretty sure, Gary, you're going to entertain us with your um, just your one wonderful insights into being an entrepreneur in the community. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you, Gary. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me tonight. Um, I, I want to share some stuff with you tonight. As um, Jonathan said earlier, it was a bit difficult trying to find context because I didn't quite know who the audience was. Um, just a little bit about me and my background. Um, I was born an entrepreneur. I'm trying to figure out whether you were born an entrepreneur or whether you become an entrepreneur. And I really was born one. I was born one out of necessity. My family were very poor, so for us we didn't get pocket money, so work was something we started at a very young age. Um, one of the things with being an entrepreneur, I think it's a very, very tough place to be in. Um, a lot of people like to say, I'm an entrepreneur because I'm in business. And I don't believe that if you're a business owner, Sorry, let me just say, yeah. No, it's just reflecting off your head. Oh, is it? Would <laughs> 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 you mind just? Yeah. So, I think it's kind of Pierre will take that up. Yeah. 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 More there. There, there, there we go. I need my, my listening. <laughs> All right. So, I don't, I, I've always thought that an entrepreneur is just a business owner, but I don't believe that's the case. I think there are people that are in business just by chance. For me, an entrepreneur is actually someone who births the business. And if you birth a business, it's kind of like having a kid growing up. Your business goes through different stages. You get your, your little adolescent stages, the teenage phases, and then you get the, the old lady phases in your life. And, and being an entrepreneur is actually very rewarding to watch these businesses grow. Now, why I say I've got a lot of stories is because, number one, myself and my business partner are involved in many different businesses. The main ones are in financial services, but we have businesses that are on IT, we have businesses that are property companies and, and all, all the likes. But I think one of the biggest privileges that I have in my business is that I consult every single day with people like you. So we get to learn about all the horror stories and the, the things that happen because of mismanagement in the business or the incorrect policies and procedures or the wrong contracts or clauses that have been omitted in your MRI or your shareholders' agreements. So we have a myriad of different uh, war stories. And in the Q&A session, I, I ask you, please, if you can, ask some questions and I can maybe share um, <coughs> some of those with you. Just to um, uh, maybe chat a bit about us, because John asked me to speak on our journey. Um, we started in 2004. We started our first... Um, uh, main business, which is called Quattro Life, and um, it was a very difficult time. My uh, business partner, um, Brett Bartlett, currently, he was a minority shareholder, and then I had two bigger um, uh, partners. The one partner was diagnosed with terminal cancer, literally four months after we had started our business. And I promise you, that story of money make funny has never, ever, ever run more true. Uh, the other business partner, who we don't have anymore, decided that he was going to not enact on our agreements that we had. On the death of a shareholder, the person has to sell their shares. This particular individual, Morris, wasn't dead at the time, but our insurance policies on his life paid out a significant amount of money to do the purchase. And the other partner got his greedy paws on the money and decided he was not going to contract because the guy wasn't dead. We had an absolute bun fight. Our business was brand new. We were geared to the hilt. I had a house in Amschlanga Rocks at the time, which was on the market, with a bond at 150 million percent. I bought a property in Kloof, which we were moving into, bonded to the hilt. My vehicles were bonded to the hilt. We had just started our business and bought a property, bonded to the hilt. Um, we had put a, a fortune into the business to get it up and running, and literally living hand to mouth every month. Now we've got this guy that's dying, a partner that's gone rogue and stealing money, and we're sitting with a brand new business trying to get it off the ground. So 
There's a thing which I learned, a medical condition called irritable bowel syndrome. I don't know if you've heard of it before. Yeah. I had it for seven years nearly, you know, constantly. So if you're thinking of being an entrepreneur, just be prepared for irritable bowel syndrome, okay? Because it, it can happen. But guys, one of the life lessons I learned from this business and this, this huge pressure that we're suddenly faced with was my life lessons for all my businesses going forward. The first thing I learned is always be honorable. So the guy that ducked and dived, he's nowhere to be seen anymore at all. My business partner and I, that are remaining Brett, we acted honorably and we contracted with the guy that was just who was dying and we bought his shares out. And then <coughs> him and his other partner had a big boxing match going forward. The partner that we broke ended up taking money from us. He called it a loan, we called it theft, but to cut a long story short, <laughs> we decided, we decided to, 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 to um, mitigate any court proceedings and any legal proceedings, and we thought all we'd do is just try and uh, sit around a table and come to some sort of agreement on a, a mutual exit for him, which we did, fortuitously. So the lesson we learned from that was, pick your fights and pick them carefully, we um, had a, a, a nice, easy, graceful exit, and we got him out of the business. My business partner and I left behind had unequal shareholding. So what it meant was, every single day that we went to work, we put our butts on the line for the business, yet, if there was a profit to be made ever, I would get more than him. And we realized at that point in time that that was probably a recipe for disaster later on. <coughs> so, he was allowed to buy more of the shares of the existing shareholder so we could have an equal shareholder. That set the precedent for us in our business going forward because there was mutual respect and mutual trust for each other and we, we understood the value that each one of us put into that business. <clears throat> I also learned a valuable lesson because I was young at the time that business partners are people that you need in a business that have a skill that you don't have. If you have somebody in your organization who's got the same skill as you, they don't really add value to you as a partner. You want someone with an opposing skill set, <coughs> someone who can offer strengths where you are potentially weak. My weakness in business, I'm a blue sky boy. I'm a dreamer, I'm a thinker. I come up with ideas and concepts. I put the business idea in place and then I walk away and it must be ready. And I'm on the next one. My business partner, can sit and he can sift through the stuff and he can make sure that the implementation and the structure is done correctly. If both of us had the same skill set as me, we would form a whole lot of companies and have no money. If we all had his skill set, we'd have no businesses to start with in the first place. So we've got value that we add to the business arrangement going forward. Okay. We're accountable to each other. As an entrepreneur, one of the, the gifts of being an entrepreneur is that you're not governed by any rules, you make your rules. However, with that freedom comes huge accountability and responsibility. It comes as accountability and responsibility to you and your family. When I got married, I was responsible for my wife. When I had kids, I was responsible for my kids. When I started the business, I was responsible for families, my employees, their families, their children, and so forth. They all need a paycheck at the end of the month. Succession planning for my business became a very, very important thing that I needed to address. One partner was dying. All of a sudden I realized, hold the boat, we can all die. What happens to this business when one of us die? We need to make provisions for things like that. We need agreements and stuff in place. With all this adversity that was going on, came a huge prospect for us. The reason being is, is that my business became a business that specializes and all the drama we had just gone through. We realized that there were people that are in business that have the same problems that we had all the time. Most people don't even know they've got the problem at the moment. The people in the room who have businesses here have the same problems that we have. You might not know you've got the problem. Where do people go to to go and find help? We went to our lawyers. The lawyers were phenomenal. They knew law like you cannot believe, but didn't understand business. You went to your financial planner who sold you policies but didn't understand business. You went to your bank. They could lend you money if you need money but didn't understand business. Where do business people go for business? I went, to, I left school with a matric. That was my, 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 um, my education done. I then started real estate straight after school, selling property. 
So I sold property for six years. All of a sudden I'm in financial services and suddenly I own a business. I didn't go to business school, no one taught me what to do, how to do it, what things to look out for, what pitfalls we had. It was all university of, of hard knocks, learning from your mistakes. Fortunately, we've also learned from some of our clients' mistakes, so we don't make the same mistakes twice, and we try and share those, those mistakes with others so that they also don't make those mistakes because they can be very, very costly. So we decided at that point in time, with all this adversity and nowhere else to go, let's be the place to go. <coughs> let's start to learn more about the business rules, the business structures, the things that can hurt people in business. And let's <coughs> rather have a port of call where people can start to go to. Um, some of the challenges and stuff that we've had in business, so I'm going to pick that up a little bit um, further. Some of the challenges that we had in business, the startup funding of a business, extremely stressful, extremely expensive. I've got a business at the moment that we've got, which is a, 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 an app, a mobile app for child protection. We committed to developing the app, the funding. I've got uh, some partners that are poorer than me. Guys, one lesson in life. If you've got a business partner, make sure he's richer than you. Okay? Don't be the richest guy in the room. And don't be the smartest guy in the room, because then you're a duck as well. Okay? You've got to surround yourself with people more intelligent than you, with skills and money. Okay? So we've got this app. The app was going to cost us 300000 to develop. Within a year, we wiped the tears out of our eyes, and we're 2.5 million rand down already in funding. Okay? You can't stop these things, though. If you stop the business, all of a sudden the business falls, you've lost money. So you keep sinking that last little bit in to try and keep it going. One of the big entrepreneurial challenges is knowing when to stop. At what point in time do you stop paying money into a bottomless pit? So many entrepreneurs stick their last cent into their business and then the business falls at the end of the day. One of the life lessons we've learned, externalize your wealth from your business. I have people that say to me, the best return I get on my money is by investing into my company. Guys, that's like taking all your money and investing it on one stock, okay, on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. That would be safer because that's a listed company, so it's got depth, it's got structure, it's got management. Your company is a tiny little company. Companies go belly up all the time. Lehman Brothers went belly up. Even countries go belly up. Greece went belly up a little while ago. If these countries and big businesses can go belly up, our businesses can go belly up too. A life lesson from that, be confident about your business and don't be arrogant about it. There's a very fine line between confidence and arrogance when it comes to business. Make your money in your business, externalize it, and diversify in multiple income streams. Another thing I learned in my business very quickly was to create your own supply chain. Try and own every single cent in your business that you spend. My business started off with one aspect, and so we realized there were needs and stuff that our company needed, our clients needed. We started a new business that fulfilled that service. And so we've grown our businesses off our other businesses, servicing each other, but owning the supply chain. What does it do? Well, number one, you own every cent that you spend, which is a great thing. But the other part of it is, is that you end up creating a business that has a offering unparalleled in the market. You end up having something that differentiates yourself from your competitors. We had a vision where we wanted this one-stop shop, this place where people could go and plug in and all of a sudden their dramas and stuff could be sorted out. We're on the journey still of building. I don't believe an entrepreneur's journey ever ends. We're constantly building, but we are building towards owning your own supply chain. If you take lots of other businesses in the world that own similar type concepts, not necessarily their own supply chain, but take for example, and I don't know their business very well, it's just from what I've, I've heard, but you take like a McDonald's type mindset, where they own the trading business, but they also own the real estate. The real estate holdings is another part of their business, not just the trading entity. They're also the biggest toy distributor in the world. Now, I don't understand, I've never understood McDonald's to be a toy seller, or is it to be a burger seller? But yet, they got kiddies meals or toys. Okay, so again, it's just a supply chain going through. The value adds that you can add to a business to diversify. Not only diversifying it in terms of offering, but also in terms of multiple income streams. De-risking your core business and having other alternative businesses to lead you along that way. 
Um, our current challenges at the moment, again, being an entrepreneur, you can have one business and run that business effectively, you can have multiple businesses. One of the challenges that we face is trying to understand all these different businesses, deal with all these different personality styles. It's a hell of a challenge. You become a mentor, you become a guardian, you become the, the agony aunt, the guidance counselor, the marriage counselor, the financial counselor, you become the business partner, the rogue, the financier, and you also end up becoming maybe a belly ape to your partner. In venture capital space, every business that needs money can't wait to have you on as their partner because they need your money to get their business to the next level. You put your money in, three years later you're sitting, that business is now profitable, and the business is now saying, here's the dividend, here's 50%, and the guy's going, hold the boat. I've done all the work, and I'm giving you half my profit. And you say, yes, but I invested in the business, and I got it to where it was. But the guy gets to a point where he doesn't want you in the business anymore. He doesn't want to pay out that 50%. The value that you gave him at the beginning was massive, but five years later, he's forgotten the value. So you've got to have strategies in place if you've got businesses like this where you're getting involved in venture capital to have favorable exit strategies. <coughs> Almost get divorced before you get married. Understand the exits in your businesses. Understand what challenges you could be potentially be facing in the future and address them at the beginning. Try and get all the rules of engagement out as fast as possible. So life lesson again, make sure that you do all the due diligence up front and have all the boxing on the table before you start your business. Have a proper shareholders agreement, memorandum of incorporation. Understand the rules of engagement so that there's no boxing or fighting down the line. If you don't understand what you're potentially getting into, surround yourself with people that do. Being an entrepreneur is sometimes extremely lonely. When you're in business and you're successful, there are a lot of people, the naysayers, that can't wait for you to fail. And then they go, ah, see, I told you so. Look, he is a football. Okay? <laughs> so guys, if you, you need to surround yourself around other people. This type of forum is phenomenal. If you've got business people, like-minded, common goals, share with each other, learn from each other. Not one person in this room knows everything, yet as a collective, you've got flippant good brain power. Share your knowledge with each other. Learn from each other. I love sitting with business owners. I love learning about business, and we learn about it every single day. If you're going to grow your business, growth strategies, again, life lessons, <coughs> we decided to grow our business. We launched and opened up offices in Cape Town and in Johannesburg to get bigger. All of a sudden, I realized I was doing things that weren't actually in my value system. They weren't even goals of mine. I was traveling all, of the, time, all the time. I wasn't seeing my wife and kids. And I'm going, what am I doing this for? There's no extra money. And if there's extra money, is the extra money really worth the sacrifice? Every single move you make in business, there is a price to pay. Guys, weigh up those prices and decide whether in fact you want to do it. You don't have to be the richest guy in the world. You don't have to be the biggest company in the world. Just find out what it is that's in your core that you want to do, your belief system. And, and, and not just you, your family. I have people that create the most monstrous businesses and go home and say, babe, look what I've created for you. And they go, who are you? I don't see you. You know? Like, is Uncle Gary coming to visit? And it's your flipping kid. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Understand what it is you're trying to achieve. I'm not saying that growing businesses is a bad thing. And I'm not saying, maybe your kids are pain in the butt and you don't want to be there. That's cool. But as long as it's your belief system, as long as it's something you value. I went to a course a little while ago, we're talking about the wheel of life and balance and all this stuff. Most of the business owners don't believe in balance. For them, balance is 90% work, 10% family. That's cool. If that's your balance, it's fine. It's not that it's wrong or right. Everybody has a different wheel, a different balance, different value systems, and different beliefs. We can't impose ours on them. But what we need to do is just take the time to actually assess what it is we want to do and why we want to do it. And make sure you revisit that plan regularly. As an entrepreneur, we have a tendency to get distracted. We are so busy building stuff and carrying on and carrying on and carrying on. Next minute, we're so far off the path, it's right. So write your goals down. I know it sounds corny. I don't write my goals down to be goal setting. I write my goals down so I flip and know what my goal is because I keep forgetting it. 
okay? It just steers me back in the right direction. I have two sets of goals, one that I write down, and the other one's my wife with a reminder. Why are you traveling? Okay. But you need to keep yourself focused and on track with what it is you're trying to achieve. One of the biggest, biggest challenges as an, as an entrepreneur. Um, I've spoken about supply chain. Grow your businesses in areas that you understand. <clears throat> Again, a lot of entrepreneurs will just keep on investing into businesses and they don't actually understand the business. That business partner that you've got goes rogue, dies, gets disabled, immigrates, does whatever he does. Suddenly you have a business with a significant investment in and you don't know how to run it. You don't have the expertise to get into it. Very, very dangerous. Life lesson. <clears throat> I've got a roof tile at home that costs three million rand. I invested into a company where you make plastic tiles from non-biodegradable waste. Phenomenal idea, great concept, eco-friendly, business plan looked phenomenal, green tech, everything. The business partner went broke, committed fraud, and buggered off to Mozambique. I have a roof tile for three million rand. Ta-da! We call it school fees and it's up in our boardroom. <laughs> okay. We couldn't go into that business, we couldn't rescue it, we couldn't resurrect it, we didn't have the time nor the acumen to be able to go in and do it. Very bad investment. So it's a life lesson. There are three main lessons that I want to leave with you today. The first one is clearly define what it is you're trying to build before you build it. It's kind of like if I gave you a whole lot of bricks and cement, you're not just going to start building a house. You're going to get an architect to design something first. So let's design your business. What is it going to look like? Then you start to build on it. The next thing is, personal thing, never ever headhunt your opposition staff. Okay, sounds crazy, just understand this. This is my life lesson, not that it will work for you. I believe in a circle of life, and if I give you something today, you're going to try and give it back to me tomorrow. So if I pinch your staff, you're going to try and pinch my staff. And I don't want you to be in that space. I don't want your skilled staff anyway. Your skilled staff could have bad habits. If people job up, generally it's not the company that's a problem, it's the person that's the problem. I would rather try and attract the right people. Once I've got the right person, I will teach them the skill that I need in my business. In my own culture, with our ethics, our integrity. Right or wrong, that's our formula. That way, number one, you create loyalty. Your staff don't just up and leave you every five minutes because you have nurtured them and you've taken them through a journey of growth and you've given them opportunity. So you've created loyalty. The second thing is you've got good habits because they're going to learn and work in the practices that you have taught. They're not going to bring bad habits with them. And the next thing is your competitors hopefully will not go and pinch yours because you've pinched yours. <coughs> don't, recome, don't become a recruitment agency for your competitor either. Make sure you pay good salaries to your people. Pay fair wage. Employ staff retention strategies in order to retain staff. There are some wonderful strategies that you can implement in a business that retain good key staff. They're available all the time. Use them. Don't take for granted because people will move. And the third one, as I said earlier, diversify your income streams and externalize your wealth. I'm not saying don't put money back into your business, that's stupid. What I am saying is keep some of your money out and save it and park it. Because a business is literally a share. And that is investing all your money into one share is absolutely crazy. The funny thing is, I'm not a gambler. I will never ever go to the casino and throw 10 grand and try. If I lose 10 grand, I'll be suicidal. If I lose 50 bucks, I'll be like, I want to die as well. I hate losing money. Yet when it comes to business, I do gamble, which is insane. I invest in people all the time. I'm constantly looking for opportunity and applying the fields, trying to look for the next gap, the next opportunity. One of the key things though is, and it's a life lesson, is invest in people, not in the business. Because you can have the worst person with the best business, you will lose money. But you can have the best people with no business and you can create money, you can create wealth. That's one of the gifts that God has given entrepreneurs, is the ability to earn. You can take everything I've got today away from me. Tomorrow I can still open up another door. Tomorrow I can still create more. 
So for me, I don't worry about material things. I have material things, but it's not my focus. If I lose my material stuff tomorrow, it doesn't matter. I can get more the next day. Because I've, got, I've learned the ability to create, to earn money, the same as what you guys have got. Differentiate yourself from your competitor. Make sure that you have something that is unique to offer. Make sure that you create your own culture in your business. It's a very, very important thing to understand. Does it stand behind your brand? We spend a lot of money in our brand. We believe up and building a brand is unquantifiable. You can't look at the books and say, oh yeah, we've made money because of our brand. But what you can do is you can definitely see that a brand awareness opens more doors. It gives you more opportunities in life. So use your brand, invest in your brand, create a good culture, a good ethos in your business with good people. Honor those people, pay them a decent wage, retain those people, nurture your businesses. That's really my message for today. I don't know if there's any questions or comments you would like to, to ask. First, let's just give Gary a little bit more.